Stephen and Miss Pat uh, for leading us in that, that song that tells a good story for us, for sure. Uh, I want us to think for a few moments today about the phrase, stop, look, and listen. And if you are familiar with that phrase, you're probably a little older than 20 or 25 years old. Uh, years ago, before the uh, cross arms and the lights and all that, uh, you might have seen an X there and you might have seen stop, look, and listen. Uh, it meant uh, when you came upon the railroad tracks, before you got out on them, you better stop. You need to uh, look different ways and you need to listen to make sure the train wasn't barreling down through there. I know uh, I've seen several situations where trains had hit cars and uh, years ago, probably in 1987, uh, my uncle, my, my mom's uh, brother was hit by a train in Atlanta uh, and killed. And uh, it was a situation where there was no warning on the railroad track. It was just kind of a little back dirt place across the tracks. And uh, I don't know if they looked and listened, but I know he and another man was in a truck and the man there at the auto auction told me they never slowed down. They just, you know, went eased on out there and uh, it was just an engine, but, but they, they should have looked and they should have listened. Uh, I feel like the, the engine would have probably blown the horn when they saw them coming out there. I would think they would. So what that means in a, a, a life sense is that before we go across anywhere, and even with the arms and the lights and all that, I still like to look <laughs> and see if I can see something coming because a train is a little bit uh, bigger than an automobile and it probably will do a lot of damage and uh, maybe uh, death to the people that are in the car. So I want us to think about what that means in a spiritual sense, that we stop and we look and we listen. Uh, I want us to examine one verse to start with. We'll look at some others as we go through. But in Joshua 1, 9, uh, remember Moses had died. God had commissioned uh, Joshua to be the leader of his people. Uh, and he had, had, had told Joshua, arise, go over the Jordan River. Uh, you and all these people to the land that I'm giving you. Uh, and we know that there was problems getting over there with, with people that didn't want to go and so forth. But then we find this in Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, God said, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Uh, so I want us to think about that verse today and think about stop looking, listen in a spiritual sense. And the first thing that I got from uh, that one verse and the situation that was there is that if we stop and look and listen so we can find God's guidance. Uh, our verses said, God said, have I not commanded you? Uh, we, we need God's guidance, amen? We need God's guidance in everything that we do. And we, we get his guidance through prayer, through Bible study, through, through uh, uh, fellow believers that give us some of that guidance. We have to make sure they're fellow believers and not just people talking. Uh, life situations, all these things help us to know God's guidance. Uh, like myself, maybe you have moved forward without God's guidance at times. Uh, and that didn't work out so well for me. I don't know how it worked out for you. Uh, you know, many, most all of you, if not all of you, know that I enjoy fishing. Now, I will, I will tell you something you may or may not believe, but my, my joy for fishing uh, and my uh, impetus, I guess, for fishing is not as much as it used to be. Uh, I still enjoy it. I just, I just don't find myself always getting out there, getting out there to do it. But when I first decided to go to Florida fishing on the coast, uh, 
I've got a guide to go with me, and I've had a few guides since then. Uh, and the reason I got those guides was because uh, of several things. You don't ever know uh, in the ocean where the rocks are going to be, the shells are going to be, uh, and where the shallower water is going to be. <clears throat> and it's hard sometimes to tell where, where the fish are. So a guide can help you to stay out of the dangers that are there. And I've run up on, on sandbars. Thank God I've never run up on oyster bar, but I've run up on sandbars a couple of times. Uh, uh, and and you, you have to do different things to get yourself off of there. Sometimes get out of the boat because water may not be about that deep. Uh, <clears throat> but it helps you to stay away from danger. It helps to give you guidance and it helps to uh, let you know how to fish, where to fish at different times of the year. Uh, and it has paid off uh, for me uh, to stop, look, and listen to what they say. Uh, now, nowadays, we have all these gadgets that we can, that we can do. And uh, I noticed uh, a man out at, out at uh, where we live uh, fishing first time about three or four weeks ago. And he uh, would ease along and he would drop his line out there, catch a fish. He'd ease along, drop his line out, catch a fish. And uh, I got out there, same places. I saw him catch about 10 and 15 minutes right out from our place. So I got out there, I didn't catch a one. Went again, didn't catch a one. So he was out there one day and I went and talked to him and just, conversation you know and uh he said you know all i have to do is set a hook i got this camera down there on my electric motor and uh i can see the fish when they bite i can watch them and uh i called somebody i knew and they said well, yeah he's got about forty six hundred dollars worth of equipment <laughs> so his guide is real good because it shows him where the fish are. You just set the hook. Somebody told me, well, that wouldn't be any fun. I don't think. I said, well, I'd like to try it a time or two, you know, <laughs> just to see, see how it works. But I'm not paying no $4,600 to put a camera down there to, 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 to catch the fish. So when we're doing things in life, it pays to stop, look, and listen and see what we can gain spiritually from the things that we're looking at. Uh, there are situations in our spiritual lives where we need to know how to proceed. We need to know the dangers. We need to know the benefits. And we need to know the consequences. Pretty much just like when I started fishing in the ocean. And like I told you, I've, I've been up on sandbars. I can remember two times and probably a little bit more than that. Uh, and it, it's no fun to get off of those things. Uh, but we need to do that. So I propose this question to you today. Why in the world would I listen to a human being telling me where to go and where not to go and how to fish and how not to fish and not listen to godly guidance when I, in a spiritual sense when I need that in my life. It would be very foolish to me to do that. That's why I want us to uh, think, about, think about this, uh, this today. Uh, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, probably you're very familiar with that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Uh, trust. Uh, for us to fully trust someone, we have to really know them. We have to know all about them. Uh, I've told you all before, when I was in Africa, they were, they were uh, selling, this uh, locksmith was selling bayonets. Uh, not bayonets, but... Uh, machetes. He's heard me talk about it before. Uh, and he gave out of them, so he told me he would bring me one the next day, go ahead and pay him. And the man that was there after he left said, in the United States, do y'all 
trust people enough to pay them ahead of time. I said, yeah, if people we trust. I said, what about over here? He said, yeah, it's the same. It's the same, people we trust, you know. I said, what about the blacksmith? He said, you won't ever see him again. <laughs> he got your money, he's gone. But he said, I saw what was happening, so I, I, I'll, I'll get it for you, don't worry about it. So you have to trust, fully trust somebody in order to listen to what they're saying. And you know, and I know, once or twice with them directing you the wrong way or telling you the wrong thing, it don't take too many times to figure out, I cannot trust this person, you know? Uh, so we have to put our full, complete trust and faith in what God's word says and the guidance that we get through the Holy Spirit. Uh, and it says to lean not on your own understanding. And, and when you look up that, that phrase, lean not, it, it talks about leaning up against something. So what it says is, that what the Lord is telling us there is, you lean against me and my word. You don't lean against other people that may or may not know what they're talking about. Uh, in all your ways, that, that means with all of our being. In every, every bit of our being that we, that we have, we're to uh, lean not on our own understanding, but trust, trust him. It talks about acknowledging him. That means to know him and he'll direct your paths or make them straight and smooth. Wouldn't it be nice to always have smooth and direct paths to follow? Just like if God were to, to map it out for us, which he has, we just don't like to listen to it all the time. Uh, Joshua, God said, I have given you this land. Stop, look, and listen for my guidance before you go in. Uh, we have the Ten Commandments, which we don't most of the time pay as much attention to as we should and as we used to, maybe. Uh, we have God's Word that leads us uh, and guides us. We have the, the, the Holy Spirit that God's Word says resides within us, dwells within us forever, that that gives us guidance in every, anything and everything that we uh, try to accomplish, anything and everything that we do. And we have life experiences. Uh, in, in life experiences, we can get in our lives, we can watch the lives of other people, we can get from God's word. The Bible says these things is written that for, for you to know what happened before, and examples for you so that you will know from that what to do. So all these different ways, God tells us to st st stop, look, and listen for his guidance. John 14, 26, following up on what I just said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. We have the power of the Holy Spirit living within us. We submit our lives to him. He leads us and he guides us. He convicts us of wrong. He guides us into what's right if we stop, look, and listen to him. Uh, there have been times in my life, and probably you could say the same thing, that I know that the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and I was about to encounter something. I was about to go into something. I was about to do something. And the Holy Spirit let me know that I shouldn't do it. And I did it anyhow. And you know how that worked out for me? Not too good at all. And we can all probably say that at some point and sometimes in our lives. Thank God it didn't take, although I'm hard-headed, it didn't take too awfully many times of falling on my face to know that I needed to follow the guidance and leadership of the Holy Spirit and, and submit my life to that. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is when we stop looking and listen spiritually, then we can be decisive and bold. Uh, our verses said, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Uh, once we know that we have stopped, looked, and listened, and we have God's guidance, uh, it's so much better to be bold 
and decisive in what we do. Uh, I can say that way in years past, way in years past, uh, there, there was times in my life when I was in situations with people and I'm, I'm sad to say I didn't always follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit because different things came up. You know, you're with friends and you're with people and you don't want to feel like you're the one that's uh, on the outs, you know, and you want to be accepted by people. So many of the times, some of the times, I have not followed the leadership of the Holy Spirit knowing, knowing what the Holy Spirit was saying to me or leading me and the consequences were not good from it. Uh, Hebrews 4, 16, we find these words, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help when in time of need. Draw near to God, approach him confidently, find mercy and grace for any time of need that you may have. And uh, I have said it many times, I've heard Brother Stephen say it, many times we we have some what we consider small thing in our life and, and it, it whether we whether we say it or not and whether probably even we let it come to our thoughts somewhere back there it says to us you can handle this yourself no need bothering god with such a small thing as that and yet it turns out to be a big thing when, when everything falls in God wants us in all of our ways to acknowledge him and let him direct our paths uh, and make them smooth for them like we, like we mentioned a while ago. Uh, be strong or, or grow firm and strong in, in your spiritual life. Be courageous. That means to be stout and bold and alert. Uh, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed uh, in anything that you come about. Uh, God was saying to Joshua, I believe, and I believe he's saying to us, you always stop, look, and listen until you get my guidance so you can grow firm, stout, bold, alert, and not tremble or be shattered when facing the enemy or the trials of life in times of need. How do we prepare for times of need? We don't always know when they're coming. I've said many times, if you're not going through a time of need right now, kind of look at the, at the door and one of those situations is probably coming around the corner pretty soon for you. You know, we can, we can go to a doctor, we can uh, have something at work, we can, we can feel like everything is going super good and it may be, but they can be bad things coming about right around the corner from you or down in a valley or, or somewhere like that. Uh, we need to be ready regardless of what the situations are ahead of us in life. Uh, I have come to times in my life when I've not been decisive and bold when I needed to be, and it didn't work out good for me. Uh, the, the, the meaning of some of the things we talked about a few moments ago means we trembled, we were shattered without God's guidance. Uh, and being decisive and bold, uh, we become de de defeated. You know, it's, I thank God that at some point in my life, and I would say probably uh, 45 years ago or so, I became more decisive and bold than I was before. I didn't really worry about what somebody else said about me, I didn't, now it still bothers you, you know, anytime somebody says something bad about you or feels bad about you, it bothers you because you don't like those things to be done. But I, I know that I'm gonna stand for the Lord right now regardless of what anybody says about me or to me. Uh, now I hope and pray that if my life depended on it, I would still do the same thing. Uh, but we, are, we have to be decisive and bold in all the things that we do. Uh, David, in his life and situations he found himself self in many times, especially dealing with King Saul, trying to kill him, 
uh, Joshua with the walls of Jericho, you know, he and the people probably thought this is the crazy thing. This is the crazy thing that God wants us to do. The disciples before and after the Holy Spirit gives us a good, a good understanding of how we're to be and, and what, what we should allow the Holy Spirit to give us in life to deal with difficult situations. They were hiding before, but after the Holy Spirit came upon them and was residing in them, they were decisive and bold enough that it didn't matter if they lost their lives. They were going to still uh, stand uh, for, for God. Uh, so many others. Esther, in the situation she was in, Mary as a teenager, uh, uh, being with child and, and uh, a virgin. Uh, they, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, all these, all these times, young Gideon, probably a uh, teenager, having to go against uh, what his people might have thought he should do. Moses, the prophets, the judges. Uh, and and we, we say many times, I've heard it so many times, and way in past times I've said this, but they were people in the Bible. But they were ordinary people that God did extraordinary things through simply because they trusted him with all their hearts. They came upon any situation in life boldly and decisively to allow the Holy Spirit, allow God to lead them and guide them in every way. God uses broken people like us to rescue broken people like you and me. Amen? Amen. And we should never forget that. Plain, ordinary people that God does extraordinary things through. So, how can we be like them? Or can we? I, I think we can. We have to allow God's guidance to be in our lives and then be decisive and bold. And the third thing I want us to look at, we go forward as we feel the presence of God. <clears throat> now, verses said, the Lord God is with you. Uh, God told him, the Lord, I am with you and I will be with you forever, wherever you go. Uh, he's there with us completely because the Holy Spirit resides within us. And if we lean upon him the way we need to lean upon him, if we allow him to direct our paths and make them straight and make them uh, uh, smooth, then things are going to go well. Two passages to show this, John 14, 16 through 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit of God. And you know, I, I'm afraid that in past years and maybe even today, uh, as Baptists, we have shied away somewhat of talking about the Holy Spirit because we don't want people to think we done gone off the edge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we see people raising their hands. We see people jumping. We see people shouting. We watch someone sitting right up here on the front, sometimes on Sunday morning, beating drums and playing trumpets and, and, and really, really getting into the Spirit. And sometimes we wonder, what is that right, you know? And so I'm afraid sometimes we have not allowed the Holy Spirit to dwell fully within us in a way that because of us submitting to him, he can really work through us the way that he should. Uh, if we belong to him, and if we stop, look, and listen, for his guidance, we can be decisive and bold in the decisions that we make. Amen? Amen? His Holy Spirit gives us his power and guidance always. Uh, David said this in Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your uh, presence or your face? Where, Lord, if I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell or the place of the dead, Behold, you're there. If I take the wings of 
the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Uh, where, Lord? He has nowhere. I want to close with this, and I'm going to read this to you. A professor, a professor of English once delivered a brilliant lecture called the Literary, literary Excellence of the 23rd Psalm. He did that to the literary society of the church where he had been brought up as a boy. The old Scottish minister who had been his pastor and teacher in his youth was the chairman there. At the close of the lecture, the distinguished speaker asked the old minister to read the psalm. He did so as he had so often through the years to the members of the congregation, especially in their sorrows and troubles. A hush followed the heartfelt recital by the white-headed old minister. Then the lecturer rose and quietly said, I may know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. The question we have to ask ourselves is, do we know the shepherd? Have we stopped, looked, and listened when the Holy Spirit had tried to lead us in a specific way? Have we uh, followed God's leadership and God's guidance? Have we allowed him to make our paths straight and smooth? Uh, have we leaned on him and acknowledged him as our leader? Or have we tried to do it on our own? We have to stop, look, and listen. He's there, and he's waiting on us. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we know, Lord, that any time we venture out on our own without the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, bad things happen. And, Lord, I, I can testify for many times in my past, uh, uh, growing up and, and younger years, Lord, that those, those times happen too often. And I know that it, it was heartaches for me and heartaches for family, heartaches for friends, heartaches for people I was around. And Lord, even when I was in church and, and, and I was more aware of the leading of the Holy Spirit than before, I, I still know, Lord, that there was times that I didn't stop, look, and listen appropriately in a way that I would be led the correct way. I pray, Lord, that we would lean not upon us, but we would lean upon you. And Lord, we would allow you, after we stop, look, and listen, to direct our paths, make them straight, make them smooth, and bring about, Lord, the results that you would like for us to bring about. We know, Lord, that you're with us forever. We know your Holy Spirit resides within us forever. We know the power of the Holy Spirit is there. We know, Lord, that unless we follow your guidance, we're gonna fail. And I pray, Lord, for each one here, each one that may hear this, Lord, that they would, would do that in a very special way and submit themselves fully to you through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen, amen. and amen.